Hey everybody, so today I thought I would show you how to to get a MySQL Workbench working against a MySQL database running in Amazon Web Services. And it turns out that's a little bit tricky, but it's kind of standard um, thing that you do. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new database up in Amazon. And I'm using the free tier. Uh, on my account which gives you 12 months to try things out and uh, so that's what I'm starting here so we'll do MySQL you could do the easy create they kind of but I'd recommend you just go ahead and go through these options what you want to be careful with free tier is that this option actually comes up if you're on free tier otherwise you're gonna get charged so um, also, the free tier is limited to how much you actually can um, use in a particular month. I think it's 750 hours a month, so consider that. So this is going to be the database password, admin password, and um, username. And then we're just doing a very small size machine here. If you, if you need something bigger, obviously you're going to have to pay for it. And so, uh, let's look at the addition. The, under the additional connectivity, you want to select yes, under connectivity for public access. That's going to allow you to reach into this database from outside. Otherwise, it it's set up to only recognize internal Amazon traffic which is a security feature, so you're going to need to be a little bit careful about that. Note the port here, 3306, which is the standard MySQL port. And we're going to leave this with password authentication. You could also use IAM, which is a, a database. And down here it tells you what your estimated costs are. So you don't want to re leave this running unless um, you're willing to pay for it. So go ahead and confirm that password, and then we'll hit Create. It'll take a few minutes to do the create, so I'm going to pause the video and uh, we'll come back to it uh, once it's created. Okay, so our database is created. Now, what we need to do is um, allow traffic coming to us um, into the server. And we have to do that by actually going in and modifying the security group for the um, the VPC that we're in. And so if you'll click into that and go to the inbound rules tab, we are going to add an inbound rule. So I'm going to hit the edit inbound rule. And we are going to be adding a rule here, custom TCP. We're going to just connect to the server over TCP, um, 3306 is our port that we want. And then right here we need to put an IP address. Now if you put 00, it opens it to all IP addresses. And that can be dangerous because you're basically opening up your server to anybody uh, that can connect to it. And so um, if you are running behind a uh, internet service provider, an ISP, you can type what's my IP and Google will tell you what your external IP address is. This is different than the IP address of your machine. This is because remember, you're going through an internet service provider before you get to Amazon, so your IP actually comes from the internet service provider. Um, so this is your external IP address. And some internet service providers switch these IP addresses every 10 or 15 minutes. And so you'll have to consider um, that as you, do, as you do this. So let's jump back over to here and what we put in is just put in that IP address and the slash 32 on it like that. And then I know I've got some of this um, blocked because I don't want my account information out there but 
Just hit the save button, it's in the lower right of the screen. And then what you'll see now is this new rule. Okay, for MySQL. So with that, we should, let's see, we should be able to connect, but before we can connect, we need to know what this machine's called. So if we go to RDS and look at our running instances, here's our database. And this is the endpoint information that you need. So this is the name that it is out on the internet. So we'll just, we're just going to copy this. And then uh, here's MySQL Workbench running on Windows. Uh, this will be the same if it's running on a Mac. It's the same or, or, uh, or Linux or Unix. So here we just go ahead and type in whatever we want to call this. And I'm just going to call it AWS RDS. And you replace the host name with that string that you just copied, with that endpoint name. And then make sure that you have the, the database um, username. Now, the best way to do this is have a database populated with users, and then you'd be using that user account here. But we're just going to go ahead and use the, the admin. And then we can hit Test Connection. And it says it was successful. So we hit OK, and now we have this. This is my local copy of MySQL running, and now we're going to connect to the copy that's running up in Amazon. And there you go. You've got the full MySQL Workbench UI. You can uh, modify things because you've logged in with an admin account. You can um, um, create new schemas, uh, add data. Do all the things that you would normally be able to do with MySQL work Workbench. And um, next time we'll talk about how you restore a MySQL database from your local machine up to Amazon. So um, I hope this was useful for you to, to see how to do this. It's a little bit tricky to do, but there's just a few steps you got to make sure you get right. So basically in review, Create your database, make it free tier if you'd like, or paid, but that's up to you. Make sure you mark it as being publicly available. You can go back and set it to be public available if you forget that. And then set the inbound rule on the security group. Uh, find your IP address. Make sure that you use the what's my IP or whatever to, to get that. And then copy the, the endpoint information over and set up your connection as a normal TCP, not TCP with SSH, just normal TCP. And that's it. I uh, hope this was useful for you. Let me know if you have any questions or uh, ideas for other videos that you'd like to see. Thanks for watching, and make sure that you like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks.